Welcome to this episode of Inside Tulsa Athletics. Our show today, we will feature four of our football coaches who have played at the professional level in football. Each one has a unique story about their playing days and how that led them into coaching. Our guests today include Tony Peters, Willie Ponder, Jonathan Brown, Levi Adcock. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for a roundtable discussion of some things I think that you'll really enjoy learning about our four coaches in the Tulsa Public Schools. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics with a brand new format we're using this week uh, to really introduce to you some of our really quality coaches that we have. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion of four of our football coaches, and I would like for them to go around the table, starting with Tony, and uh, introduce yourself and uh, give a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, my name is Tony Peters. Uh, graduated from Paul's Valley High School, 1971, so quite a while back. But uh, attended NEO for three semesters and then transferred to the University of Oklahoma where I uh, played for Barry Switzer. I was actually his first class as a, as a head coach. And then um, uh, we won the national championship, of course, in 74 and uh, played on an uh, undefeated team for actually three years. We were undefeated down there. And then was drafted in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns there for four years, uh, you know, made a rookie, uh, started basically from day one of, of uh, entering the league, and then traded in 79 to um, Washington, uh, known as Commanders at that time, the Redskins, and of course uh, managed to, uh, to make all pro and then play on a, a Super Bowl champion team there. So uh, played 10 years in the league. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Levy. I'm glad I get to follow that one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I grew up in Claremore, graduated from Claremore Sequoia in 2007. Uh, there we, I was part of the uh, first and only state championship team there. Um, from there I also went to NEO, uh, played two seasons there. Um, fortunate enough to earn a scholarship on at Oklahoma State. Uh, played three years there. Uh, two years, I was uh, all Big 12 offensive lineman. My senior year, I was a first team All American um, tackle. Um, from there, I went undrafted with Dallas, was with them through training camp, um, got released from them at the end of preseason, kind of bounced around a little bit between a couple different teams, and uh, finished the season the last uh, seven or eight games with the New York Giants on their practice squad. Um, <clears throat> from there, and that was in 2012. Um, 2014, I ended up um, going up to Canada, and I played three years up there, um, off offensive line, obviously. Uh, retired from there once I had a kid in 2016. Uh, came back, started coaching, got on with uh, Coach Blankenship at Owasso, um, and then now I'm over at Rogers. Very good. Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan Brown, uh, Booker T. Washington, uh, graduated in 1994 uh, from the Booker T. Washington, I like to say that. Uh, fortunate enough, Coach Former recruited me, went to the University of Tennessee, uh, four-year starter there, uh, second in single-season sacks behind Reggie White, uh, fourth uh, in career sacks there. was fortunate enough uh, to be All-SEC uh, and All-Academic All-SEC as well. Got drafted in the third round, 98. Uh, by the Packers, uh, played there for a couple years, got cut, uh, went to the Rams, was, able, was on that Super Bowl team, uh, and played there for a year. And then after that, I kind of bounced around from San Diego to Denver. Then uh, got cut, set out of football, and uh, went up to Canada for eight, uh, I think eight years with the Argos. Uh, was a CFL East Defensive Player of the Year and uh, made uh, 
uh, the all-star teams up there as well. And so uh, 2010, I stopped because of my back and I promised my mom I would get my degree. And I went back to Tennessee to get my degree before she passed. And uh, after that, uh, Coach Howe from Edison, I came back home and Coach Howe uh, and Coach Ships brought me over there. And then Coach Danzler found, like, found that I was back in town and brought me back to Booker T. And uh, I was DC there when we won the state championship in 2017 and uh, just happy to be the head coach now. Excellent. Willie. Uh, Willie Ponder. Um, started my high school career here in this actual just building my freshman and sophomore year at Webster. Ended up transferring to Central High School. Um, won a state basketball championship there. Um, fortunate enough to earn a scholarship to go to the University of Tulsa, Coach Raider. I um, think I was my personal belief, I was a little too close to home. Um, good place at TU, um, good time there, played as a true freshman. Ended up going to Cockerville Junior College, getting my degree, finishing, getting my grades up. Then go to Southeast Missouri State um, and play for Coach Shaw, which is a head coach at uh, Central now. Um, two, two years there, um, good career there. All-American and then end up going uh, to New York Giants, getting drafted in the sixth round. Um, played four, three, three full seasons there. Um, my second year, I ended up leading the league in kickoff return. Um, then ended up leaving New York, going to Seattle, uh, finished out the year at Seattle and then in St. Louis in, in the same year. Um, hurt my knee there, then ended up going to uh, Canada and playing in Canada. That's when I got a chance to see JB um, when I was in Canada with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And then he came back home, finished my degree, went back to school, um, and now blessed to be a head coach at uh, Tulsa McLean. There you go. Well, that's that's a really tremendous background, guys, and and our student athletes are really fortunate, I think, to be able to have the experiences that you've had. Uh, and conveyed on them on, on a daily basis. Uh, let's talk about uh, a discussion about your uh, professional career. What, how has that shaped what you do? And did anybody just jump in uh, with how you coach today? I, I can start it off. Um, my rookie year, I mean, it was my second year when Coach Tom Coughlin came into New York. Um, I mean, I still have my clock set on Coughlin time. Right now. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% accurate. I'm just going to say that. Um, just, just the discipline of it and just how things um, of doing the right thing and how the little things matter. Um, that first year when Coach Coughlin came in, I mean, it was a big change. I mean, you know, had Strahan was there, Tiki Barber was there, all these veteran guys. And when he's finding those guys on how they're putting on their socks, you know, if you get a blister, that's a problem because you didn't put your socks on correctly. Mm -hmm. So it was all the attention to detail, um, the little things that really uh, made a big difference. And I could see why those next few years after that, he was had the success he had in New York. Tony, what about you? You, you played for Barry and, uh, and then played <laughs> in the league. Right, played for Barry. And of course, uh, you know, some pretty good coaches, uh, Joe Gibbs, obviously. Uh, you know, goes out <laughs> and, good. and history is one of, the great, above average. Uh, one of the great coaches. And, you know, Jack Pardee, you mm -hmm. know, guys that have made a name for themselves, uh, mm -hmm. easier as coaches are, are players. But mm -hmm. I think Willie is correct. I think, you know, once you get to that level, you realize that, hey, there are a lot of great players out there. Yeah. And, you know, what separates mm -hmm. those individuals who are able to, you know, stay, mm -hmm. to stick. Because, you know, every day they're, they're you know, is a challenge yeah. because someone's looking for your job. So it teaches you the discipline, it teaches you, uh, you know, to sort of go the extra mile. And uh, the preparation, obviously, you know, the studying, understanding what your job is. And, and you know, that that is the big difference because, you know, uh, it's like in Oklahoma, you know, the three years we were undefeated there, the two years I was there, you know, we, we had one tie with SC in uh, 1973, I guess it was. Uh, but those those players were all very focused, not, not only in the classroom, but in the uh, on the athletic fields. And I, again, when you get to the level that, you know, the NFL level, the professional level, you, you have to be spot on mm -hmm. as far as understanding what your job is. 
you know, mistakes will beat you. You know, and that's that's something that you, I think. It was a daily a daily thing, like you said. I think a good friend of mine was Charlie Harper, who uh, played at Oklahoma State right. and played for the Giants. Right. And uh, uh, he uh, told me that Allie Sherman would tell him every year when he came to camp, Harper, I got a guy we <laughs> yeah. we drafted. You don't take your place. Right. <laughs> and Harper said, Look. I don't want to go back to Broken Era. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. And so he, he he would get ready to play. Well, we'll we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we'll talk to to, to Levy and to Jonathan about what their experiences have been uh, with uh, their uh, professional career. We'll be back after these messages. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against one tough competitor, Glass. That's right, only glass bottles and jars are recyclable. Don't even think about sinking a drinking glass or mirror. Always good to empty your glass bottles and jars before recycling. These two get it, emptying both bottles from far out, and they remove the lids. Score big by recycling your glass bottles and jars. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Nathan Hills me that you have to be consistent I'll go in and be dedicated because because students at Nathan Hill look up to, to the football team. Being an athlete at Nathan Hill has taught me to be confident and disciplined and always to be open-minded and always ready to work with people no matter how difficult it is. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. We continue our tabletop discussion today. Uh, let me tell us about some of your experiences. I can kind of relate some of the things I went through as as far as qualities of a coach. The best way I can apply it is the attention to detail, doing everything as best you can. That's those two things make you a better person because I promise if you're messing up off the field in the league, they're going to find somebody who's not messing up in the field. If you're not doing stuff, to your best ability or full speed, they're gonna find somebody who will. Um, I just remember at OTAs and summer training camps, watching people drop from injuries. Well, in order to get new people in, somebody's gotta go. I just remember sitting there during some of them practices going, oh, there's four. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it ain't my day. Is Every single day. time, yeah. somebody's gotta go if they're bringing people in, so. Right. Once again, if if you put your best product on the field, and that's that's kind of my approach to coaching is every day is my best. Yeah. Yesterday is over, and um, I don't know who would say this is. I'm gonna steal it from somebody, but the easiest day was yesterday. Yeah. So from here on, it's and I and I tell my kids this every day: y'all gonna get my best. I don't care what yesterday looked like, but today's different. We're gonna get my best every day. Excellent. Well, Jonathan, you played the SEC. How was that? Oh, it was fun. It was fun and. I will tell you, I got a couple stories. That my first story was when I first got to UT. Uh, somebody got hurt. I forgot who it was. And when you're in high school, and, and you know one of the better players get hurt, it was one of our better guys. You know, practice kind of shuts down, and it blew my mind that all I heard was the coach saying, "Move the drill up," <laughs> and they just let the guy. The guy was just laying there. I mean, he, but we're still practicing. But you know, at, you know, it's a business. You got to get reps in, and yeah. and so that was kind of my welcome to the. You know, SEC or, or or of the business of football that it is a business, and just to piggyback on what these guys are saying is, it's the attention to detail. Uh, it's the number one thing. Is we watch a lot of film in college, but you get to that next level is you just watch film all day. You know, and people don't understand uh, how long the days are. Mm -hmm. You know, you have uh, you know when I was in the league, Tuesdays were off days. And you know, when I was at Green Bay, uh, Mike Hunger used to have uh, winning Monday. So if we won Sunday, we'd have Monday off, and then it was mandatory Tuesday off. But Wednesday, Thursdays are grind days. You know, guys get there at seven in the morning and don't leave to, you know, six at night. And people don't really understand that. They just see the finished product, but they don't see how much time these guys put into mm -hmm. their bodies, uh, you know, until film work. And and that's another thing is just how much people, uh, you know, bought masseuses or or got whatever, you know, it's, it's stuff like that, just to take care of your body because uh, your body was everything. And mm -hmm. once your body started breaking down, you can't make any money. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so that was as important as I saw. Mm -hmm. that. You'll be history mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about uh, high school athletics. Uh, you guys have 
were good athletes, obviously, going up uh, through the high school ranks and into college. Uh, and there's a lot of concern today uh, about specialization, that uh, you've got to be concentrated on one sport to be able to get to that next level. Uh, what's y'all's philosophy on multi-sport athletes? I go first. I, I think kids need to play. Uh, I think I encourage our kids to play not two, but three sports in high school. Uh, because once you leave high school, you're never going to get that opportunity mm -hmm. again. And I think other sports uh, teaches you, uh, works different muscle and body parts that will help you in your number one sport. Uh, that's just my biggest thing. Uh, I know if you play football, you're going to play football, basketball, or football and track for the speed guys. And I know a lot of those guys, those college coaches, they look for guys that are two sport athletes who run, be, do football and track uh, because they know what kind of players they're going to get. So I encourage my kids to enjoy the extracurricular activities at, at our Tulsa Public Schools. I can tell you, I was a three sport athlete in high school. He talked about making your number one sport better. I didn't know what my number one sport was. <laughs> I thought it was baseball. I should still be playing in a league right now, baseball. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I figured out. I mean, uh, I didn't start high school football until my senior year, and I thought baseball was it. That was going to be my ticket everywhere. Well, turns out it was football. So if it wasn't for the mother sports, making, well, soon to be my number one sport better, I would, I would, have, never, never, I would have never made it in football. Never. Now, Rogers has a, a, a policy, don't they? You have to be in yep. two sports? You have to be – anybody that's uh, not a senior has to play two sports. Yeah. Hmm. He's being enrolled. So uh, Coach Thomas and the cross-country team's got about about 300 kids, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they know basketball cross-country. Cross <laughs> well, I, I uh, agree with multiple sports 100%. I mean, you know, I played everything in high school. I played football, basketball, track. Baseball, of course, baseball, once you get to high school, is a little bit different for us. So mm -hmm. growing up as a kid playing baseball, by the time I got to high school, we were playing American Legion. So mm -hmm. we were playing summer. Yeah. And, and uh, I actually signed a, a, my, a dual scholarship to play football and basketball at East Central. Mm -hmm. So I signed with uh, East Central out of high school, which is 32 miles from my hometown. I was actually recruited by Leon Cross oh, yeah. at the Allstate Games in Edmond. And I come up out of the secondary and knock their top running back out in practice. And so he said, son, uh, he had Chuck Bowling. Where are you going to school at? I said, I'm going to East Central. <laughs> he said, well, we'll guarantee you a scholarship. We're out of scholarships right now, but if you go to NEO, we'll guarantee you a scholarship. You know, and, Leon Cross recruited me yeah. uh, when I was at Rogers. I, uh, I'll never forget, I took an official visit uh, down to Norman, mm -hmm. and they flew me down to Norman on a private plane. Right. And so the weather was bad on Sunday when I was supposed to fly back. Mm. And you ever see the movie Straight Jacket? Yeah. yeah. Well, he took me to the movie Straight Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget seeing yeah. this guy who's an all American, yeah. right, you know, yeah, everything, yeah. white knuckled, looking at the screen. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 what, a, what a great guy. And I never saw him again <laughs> until I was coaching at K State. And he was up in the press box and we ran right, right square into each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. 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 was a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. But to finish that story, uh, once uh, I went to NAO and looked at the basketball team, it's like, man, these sports are overlapping. Mm -hmm. So I ended up running track. So I ended up playing football and running track in college, which, you know, uh, works out. As right. Said, because, right. But you, I just don't think you, you lock yourself in in high school. You know, right. you want to try to experience it all, as Coach Brown was saying, you know, because you want to go travel that route once. Sure. Yeah. Once you get committed, you know, to a full time, it's full time. I mean, you know, we're working out three times a day. I, I know I was, yeah. it, you know, and professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's morning, noon, and night during the off season, yeah. trying to get ready. And I mm -hmm. uh, had similar work habits when I was in high school. It would be times when I would be the only high school player in the in the weight room, yeah. you know. So it's like, it, but it was part of your DNA, yep. yeah. exactly. you know. Part of your DNA. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Willie, what about you? Oh, I'm all for it. Um, I mean, I even think back to our state basketball championship team. Um, we had some great basketball players on that team, but Coach Scott, he loved when the football guys came in because mm -hmm. he was going to bring another element. And not only we Tough played AU basketball with 
the guys that was on the team. So um, I'm all for it. And, and, and it's like what Coach said, don't lock yourself in. Mm -hmm. That's some high school experience and it's something that you just flourish, you know. Mm -hmm. and, one that keeps your grades up, you gotta keep your grades up and it just keeps you on your toes and keeps you working out um, throughout the year. So I'm, I'm definitely all for uh, multi-sport athletes. Well, we'll get started with this and then we'll go to break here in about a minute and a half. But uh, what is uh, uh, what is one thing that you think uh, that you experienced uh, in your early career in high school that uh, made a lot of difference in the way you looked at the sport that you played? Hmm. Good question. I would probably say for me, um, uh, I would probably say for me, it, it really hit me when Garrett, uh, Garrett McGee, uh, he went to uh, Arizona State and they kind of got in a little trouble and then he came back and went to OU. And uh, he was a person I always looked up to. I was a freshman when he was a senior. And he came back and he was like, you know, I remember him talking to me and saying, Jonathan, you're going to have to work hard. Like you're gonna have to work hard because this next level, uh, people are competing daily. And you're gonna have to do extra uh, on your own, running stadiums without the team, uh, just so you can get better. And so uh, I think he actually helped me, uh, you know, grind out and, and get better. And uh, it kind of helped me to push myself to be the best person I could. So I would say him coming back. And he also told me that Howard Snellenberger wasn't giving him water. And I was like, I'm not going over here. You mean the Sooner Nation didn't have any water back then? Uh, <laughs> Howard wasn't giving him no water back then. <laughs> well, we'll come back and uh, we'll get some other thoughts uh, after these messages. Hey Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is looking to defend their title against aluminum and steel cans. Bob, most people think of the kitchen for this opponent, but aluminum and steel cans like empty shaving cream cans also play extremely well in bathrooms all over Tulsa. That was nothing but bin, Bob. Wow, right into the bin. Team Johnson has buttoned up another win. Score big by recycling your aluminum and steel cans. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Booker T. Washington has taught me to carry myself with class as an athlete, student, and friend, and um, to have responsibility on and off the field. Being an athlete at Memorial High School has taught me to be a better person, because when you play sports, attitude is the main thing you have to deal with, not just your own, but other people's. It also teaches you to be the bigger person. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. I want to continue with what we were just talking about uh, and uh, talk about uh, uh, who is one person who really, really changed your direction or was an impact on your career. Levy, how about you? It's going to be a little different, but this is the truth. My mom, um, I ain't never been held to a standard like she held me to, regardless of anything. Uh, she grew up, she was my baseball coach, basketball coach. Um, I'm telling you, in high school playing football, I mean, coaches didn't have to tell me I was being soft because my mom was going to be the first one to say it. <laughs> and I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, and I, it, it's funny, but looking back on it, I'm like, man, what, if I didn't have that, what would have, what would have been? Um, I know I, I remember getting beat for a sack in, in Canada. I remember her telling me, like, well, you played bad. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, off, off one play, I appreciate right. it. But, but that, that's, I, yeah. I say that jokingly because she, man, she, she had instilled this mindset. And at the time I didn't appreciate it as much as I do now, but it was make them fear you. No matter what you're playing, basketball, baseball, football, it was always take it to them. Mm -hmm. Make them fear you every play, yeah. no matter what. I think it takes when I first started playing, um, I didn't start playing. I started out in flag, played one year in flag, and uh, I never forget. I tackled the guy, you know, in, in the flag football game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like seven oh seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> and it was like, like no, no hitting. <laughs> Somebody's over here. Yeah, there you, you go. Know, that's I the, tackled the guy. That's the guy you, know? you put in the middle. Yes. And I remember my coach. It was uh, <laughs> Sydney Pete, <laughs> right over here at the West. Maybe I started playing right oh, here yeah. at West. Maybe uh, mm -hmm. Stillers. Um, Sydney right. Pete, Lyndon Golf. 
Um, and he's, you know, and this was the mindset he gave me. You know, we're playing play, can't tackle, right. but good job, though. <laughs> you know, he's one of those, you know. Love and, it. And, and Love it, yeah. It was from that point on the next year and playing tackle and just the uh, aggressiveness and, and just, you know, I, I come to find out if you want to play this game, you, they know. Like, mm -hmm. and, and it was just something that my little league coaches, like I said, Sidney Pete and um, Lyndon Golf, <laughs> um, those guys really instilled something in me when I started playing in the fifth grade that um, it's either go hard or go home and <laughs> compete and work. And, and I mean, I was always in the gym. So I think it started really with my youth when I um, came over to the West, maybe soon. Tony, what about you? Who has been back? Well, I'm, I'm going to go with Levy. I, I was thinking exactly the same thing he was thinking. Mm -hmm. My mom, yeah, she mm -hmm. raised 11 kids, okay? And she's mm -hmm. like five foot two, 99 pounds or yeah. so like that. And, uh, Tougher than a two dollar steak. Oh, God. Dude. And <laughs> work, you know, three or four jobs, you know. Yep. Because, mm -hmm. you know, back in those days, it was limited opportunity for African American, especially, you know, females and males. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she was a domestic worker, you know, mm -hmm. a maid. And, uh, many times I had to go with her to get her caught up. Sometimes mm -hmm. she'd get behind. But, Man, she was a competitor. You know, we during the summers we would play softball. Of course, she played a catcher, mm. and you know she could sling you out. You know, I mean, so <laughs> so you try to steal or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she'd get right out there and get in the dirt with you, and and uh, it was always encouraging. If you had to be somewhere, she made sure you got there on time. And if you needed whatever you needed to be able to get out there and compete, and she was there. And, and uh, I remember going to when I got to OU. I think she went to every away game Whoa. she figured out a way to get there and you know somebody you know she figured out a way to get that ride and get there and, and so she was always there so i mean she'd have to be i think the number one person who impacted me to do well because i wanted to hopefully provide yeah. some things sure. for her as I, you know i think that's something too that that uh the way society has changed there's we don't have a lot of that with families anymore, we're, we're so diverse, going different directions and right. everything. And that family unit, that that support unit, is not as strong, I think, as it once yeah. was at one time. I agree. Right. Levy, why were you? Why did you become a coach? When I finally decided to, to hang it up, more like got pushed out, but I'm going to call it retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife, I said, I got to stay in football in some form or fashion. I don't care what it is, yeah. whatever. I was like, I just want to stay with it because it's the only thing I've done for so long. I mean, it's to me, it's kind of scary thinking about going out and being a salesman and having to make commission or something like that. To me, football's a comfort zone. It just really is to me. Uh, and so I had a couple of different opportunities to be a graduate assistant, which I kind of walked away from those and – I was like, you know what? High school is where my life kind of started moving in the right direction because I had, I had really good men around me that coached me hard, held me accountable, um, and really, really, really pushed me in that direction. So I remember I talking to my high school coaches. I was like, I want to get into it. And they're like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Pay no money in this. Go do anything else. Right. Go work at Walmart. And I said, man, I was like, guys, this is what I, this is what I want to do. I don't know. And as I got going, I was, I want to be coach offensive line. That's the only thing I've ever <laughs> loved. And so as I get going and going, every, all of a sudden plans just keep changing. Everything kind of just keep changing and molding into different aspirations and dreams. And, and this is kind of where I'm at now. We'll see how it, how it keeps unfolding. <laughs> really, what about you? A oh, question again. I'm sorry. The the person uh, that put you in. I mean, why why, why, why did you get into coaching? Um, it's kind of this is just something. That's in me. Um, mentoring. Looking yeah. back, I mean, my time when I got out of playing in the league professionally, I was lost. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honest to say that. I didn't know which way I wanted to go um, mentally, physically, all that stuff. And um, talking to Dr. Oliver Wallace at the time, he gave me a chance to be a coordinator at, at Central. And then talking to another mentor, um, went back to school and finished my degree and was able to uh, continue coaching high school but just to be that door be that ear to to help the young men um that i know the help that i had 
um, coming up because I, I made some choices and things and I always had someone, um, a man that was, and it was from the sport of football um, that would give me a chance. So uh, it's just, I think it's just something that, that's in me and it's a comfort zone, like Coach said. Um, and I love it. I mean, I love the game and, and, and I like to see when, when I first started coaching, when I seen a young man have success off of something, he came back and told me it worked. Mm -hmm. Coach, that worked, you know. Um, so it's just the comfort level of it, and it's just part of it's just part of me. Tony, why do you coach? I think, sorry, sorry. Right. It's kind of paying it forward because somebody did yeah. it for us. Now yeah. we're just kind of paying it forward, yeah. doing the same thing right. for somebody. Else. Yep. Well, my decision to work with young people really started back when I was. 14 or 15, I, mm -hmm. you know, you question, okay, which direction are you headed? Mm -hmm. you know, where are you going? Why are you here? And mm -hmm. there were three things I wrote down. <clears throat> One was to uh, graduate high school, mm -hmm. go to college and graduate, and then work with youth. And that was the picture I had in my mind. So, uh, I mean, there were many times when, you know, I was helping others mm -hmm. as far as players or whatever it was. I mean, if we were on the basketball court, you know, we're working on shooting. That this is what we need to do. And so uh, as far as the high school coach and then my education was in, degree was in education. So, you know, I knew that it's going to be in that I'm at Ram. I'm going to be teaching. Because to me, football doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it's teaching. Yeah. You know, so and my thing is if, if kids can't get it in the classroom, they're probably not going to get it out mm -hmm. on the field. You know, so it's just as important. It's just learning and, and, you know, so I kind of set that stage way back when, but uh, I, when I started coaching high school, I said to myself, well, my kids, I wanted to spend more time with my biological kids because they were at that point where they were getting ready to transition to high school. So it gave me the opportunity to spend more time around them. So that's sort of the, you know, the beginning and of course, uh, you get to Tulsa, well, it's almost 30 years later. <laughs> it's like, hey, where's the time go? <laughs> but I really enjoy, uh, as Willie said, you know, the kids and, and what they may get out of it. I was at a uh, boxing match with uh, with uh, uh, Milton. Uh, Say okay. No, no. Uh, Jeremiah Milton, uh, he's a boxer, okay. a heavyweight boxer. Mm -hmm. And there were tons of <laughs> graduates at the at the boxing match, ESPN yeah. thing, it was a live with ESPN. Yeah. And these kids kept running up to me like, and they said, man, I can't believe, you know, you're here, you saved my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they came out and played football. It's like yeah. uh, Milton is a, one of the cont heavyweight contenders, mm -hmm. but he only played one year of football, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in high school. Yeah. And just to get to try to re stem because it's a mechanism they can use to yeah. continue to develop as individuals, you know, yeah. uh, understanding how to deal with the stress, the pressure, you know, the, uh, you know, because when you get out there, you know, it's time to perform, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and if you're not prepared, yeah. you can let off a silly, right? Yes, you yeah. can. Lights get bright. Very silly. <laughs> and lights get bright. So, well, you know, I think that's uh, kind of mine because I, I had really good coaches. Uh, in Kentucky and in Oklahoma after we moved here my junior year. Mm -hmm. And there was no question in my mind what I wanted to do. Right. You know, I wanted to be in athletics. And yeah. 51 years later, I finished. <laughs> Still, <laughs> in it. Still in it. Hey, we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, Tulsa, we have a crushing recycle play of the day for you. Team Johnson versus paper and cardboard. They're starting off slow today, probably trying to figure out what to do with those styrofoam plates since they're not recyclable. There's the big play we were waiting for. Boom! Completely empty cardboard boxes dunked in the cart. Score big by recycling your cardboard and paper. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you.
Welcome back, and we'll finish up the last segment uh, with Coach Brown, the person that made you uh, an impact on your life to go into the coaching. Uh, well, you know, just I will piggyback on all of these guys' points, what they said. Uh, football has given me, to, the, to date, has given me everything in my life, to this date, and where I'm at right now in my life. Uh, the, the relationships uh, that I've, I've built have allowed me to come back and coach. Uh, and so I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, uh, I used to, I know I'm big and tall, but I always tell people, because everybody comes up to me like, you're big. I'm like, I'm not big. You go to the league, it's a big cast. <laughs> and so that being said, I wasn't the biggest, the fastest, or the strongest. And so I was in the film room. And uh, one of my old coaches was like, man, you watch a lot of film. And I was like, I got to, man. I got that's, That helps me play faster by knowing formations and looking at tendencies and looking at my tackle. Who am I going against? Is he moving with his left mm -hmm. foot? Is his, is his knuckles getting red? Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. And he was like, man, you probably should go into coaching. And that was the first time I ever heard that. And that's kind of how it was. You know, yeah. I kind of went into coaching and uh, haven't looked back. And so I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I remember the very first paycheck I got was 1969. I went home that day and I told my wife, I cannot believe they're paying me to do this. <laughs> yeah. Because I love what I'm doing. Right. Yes. Well, let's get into uh, your programs now. And, uh, uh, Levy, what's, what's the one thing you want a kid to get out of your program? The attention to detail, being disciplined in the classroom, the next sport they move on to, uh, for the seniors, it'll be life after May. If they're going to college football. I want to kind of prep them for that discipline because it's it's a whole different world after we talked about it being a business. And college is a business. They're going to try to replace you every year. That's their, that's their whole goal is to go find a better recruit every year. Mm -hmm. And I just want to prep my kids to have the discipline, the self-discipline more than anything, to control themselves in any situation. Willie? Um, I'll just back, talk about the four cornerstones of my program. And I think those four cornerstones, which is your attitude, your effort, your discipline, and your passion. Um, from those four things, your attitude, what kind of person are you? Are you coachable? You know, your effort, are you giving it your all every day in the classroom, off the field, wherever, just in day-to-day -day life? Um, then obviously we got to have discipline. Without discipline, you kind of don't have nothing. You know, you can have a million dollars, you ain't got no discipline on it. For you look up, you won't have a million dollars. You won't have it. <laughs> um, so just to really hone in on um, those four cornerstones, because um, I think those cornerstones is is it go it can go with you a long way. You know, um, when when you're in high school, when you're out of high school, going to college, pros, wherever it is, you have to keep those four things in check. So mm -hmm. as long as I keep hammering those four things, it's about the attitude, the effort, the discipline, and their passion. And whatever it is that they do, um, we'll do it. I won't matter. Tony, what do you think? Well, you know, obviously I'm the assistant coach nowadays. Mm -hmm. Way too much responsibility as the head coach. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we want we want those kids to realize that that effort, you know, hard work, yeah. you know, pays off. You know, when especially when you're going against you know better talent, you know, the hard work portion will kick in for you if you put in the work as you know everyone has alluded to as, as it relates to studying fam studying uh, you know your opponent and understanding you know the game which is the biggest challenge I think uh, at, at least from from my standpoint what I've observed is kids don't completely understand the game uh, and you know the purpose of first and ten you know Second is short, you know what I mean? So uh, uh, it's not always the big play, you know? So the team aspect of it, you know, yeah. we're all working to accomplish a single goal, you know? Obviously it starts with whatever. I mean, if you kick off, you know, receive the ball, making the right moves, now going first and 10, you know, we need to make, you know, three yards on average per play, right? 3.3, .3. we can get that mm -hmm. every play, mm -hmm. no penalties. We got a chance, yeah. right? And take our shots when we have the opportunity. So uh, it's just, you know, I, I think guys that have played at the level we played at, you know, understand it's, it's chess, not checkers, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Yes. That's a good, good yeah. point. John, what about you? What's the most important thing in your program? 
I would say discipline and character. Uh, you know, that's one thing that I'm big on is trying to make men a character or, you know, instill that in them. Uh, you know, our big thing is team together. Everyone achieves more uh, by in. Uh, you know, everybody has skin in the game. And that's the kind of things we try to teach. And, and, I, try, and I try to hold kids accountable for their actions uh, because life will, will hold you accountable if you don't do the right thing uh, as much as possible as you can do. And so uh, just just being disciplined and, and building character. And, you know, at my school, you know, I just try to let them understand that, that no one is bigger than the program. And uh, the program's going to keep going because it's Booker T. And we've always had guys. Uh, but what are you going to do right now when it's your moment? And, you know, that's some of the stuff I preach about and, and talk to them about. As we get into uh, the latter part of our show here, let's, uh, let's talk about some things that happened during your time as a professional athlete, something that uh, uh, was kind of funny at the time, and, or maybe not funny at the time, but funny now. Uh, Levy, what about you? <sighs> Once again, wasn't funny at the time, <laughs> but now it's kind of funny. But it was my first practice as an NFL player. And, you know, as a, as a rookie, you're going to go as hard as you can because you won't be the guy not going hard, okay? Uh, well, I'm running scout team offense. I remember I climb up to the a back and we we're uh, demonstrating for New Orleans. And so running outside zone, I get to the backer. And, of course, I just, just torpedo him. He goes flying back, lands on his back. Well, out of my peripheral comes the linebacker coach. Just chewing me for about a clean two minutes, never <laughs> stop. And that was the day I learned that everybody stays off the ground in practice. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Tony, oh, what about you? you? I bet you had a lot of stories. Oh, yeah. Well, that's hard to arrow kind of. I know some of PG. Come some of, the other. Some of I, you know, I'll tell you the biggest, biggest <laughs> Biggest, uh, and it was funny in a sense, uh, was uh, when there's a possible transition change at the head coaching level, oh. you know, it gets to be pretty interesting. Uh, starting in Cleveland, uh, uh, our head coach was Forrest Gregg, and of course, he played at Green Bay and Dallas, and yeah, you know, was a Hall of Fame guy. Well, at the end of his reign there, uh, <laughs> Every day he comes to the meeting rooms, he he's talking about the ownership, right? Art yeah. Modell and yeah, yeah, I know they they've got somebody down here that's spying on me. This and that, everything, you know, everything <laughs> I say. And so, you know, we're in this little amphitheater meeting room. Of course, I'm way at the back, so just in case things are being thrown, you know, <laughs> I got a chance to duck. <laughs> anyway, so he's while he's talking and cursing out the ownership and. Walks over to a door, yanks it open, and here comes the personnel director falling through. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you're listening? <laughs> if you want a seat here, bam, slams him in the seat. There's a seat right there. Because <laughs> he used some, some other expertise. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're like, oh, man. This is the NFL. Like, wow. Well, he was aware of it. He's yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> not for long. Yeah. yeah. Not for long. <laughs> that was the funniest. Funniest uh, experience I had. And of course, uh, I was at the dinner with uh, John Riggins and Sandra Day O'Connor, who was a Supreme Court justice. And he told her to loosen up, baby. You drink. She was very stoic. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, he had to slur it. You know, loosen up, baby. <laughs> Riggins would do yeah, that. Was, yeah. Riggins was yeah. a different cat, man. Right. I'm telling you. <laughs> Willie, what about you? Oh, man. It's a couple. Um, it's like I said, it's not funny now. but I mean, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. But it's just a Coach Coughlin when he came in and, um, you know, he was making all these changes, his clocks and everything. Yeah. And you have these veteran guys that have been there. And uh, <laughs> he comes in, he's like, you can kind of hear the whispers like, I ain't doing, you know, I ain't, you know, this doing that. that. And when he hit, uh, he hit straight hand with probably one of the biggest fines and like, <laughs> type of thing. Every time then, when now from that point on, when he walking, yeah. it's like different. You know what I mean? Everybody's yeah. just like, damn, he's fine straight hand like that. Yeah. yeah.
Right, so everybody, <laughs> hey, easy. Steve, I know. Easy. Hey, easy. Yeah. Hey, easy. Hey, this guy ain't playing no games. <laughs> hey, I true story. Block some of this out. I, mean. I know. Uh, he, Tom Coffin called me Joe Adcock every day. Yeah. Joe, <laughs> my name's Levy Adcock. He called me Joe every day. Never yeah. once corrected him. Yeah. And I said, "You got it. I'm yeah. Joe. I'll be Joe as long as you as need long me. As long as you need me well, on the course, team." Of course, Greg was like that too. You, was, you know, you could yeah. wear shades. Yeah. If you were in the meeting, no you know, shades. Because he thought yeah. you were out drinking or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know a story about that too, but I'm not going to. Yeah. i tell you the funniest, funniest thing was, uh, you know, as a rookie, you had to stand up and entertain yeah. Yeah. Uh, doing yeah. training camp, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I found a way around it. I never shared that with anybody. But uh, so I'd stand up, they hit the little table, you know, mm-hmm. ring, 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 ring. Mm-hmm. And so I'd sing Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I go, oh, Oklahoma, where the wind comes from. Yeah. <laughs> One time was all it took because when I got up and said, Oh, God, they like, sit down. They like, sit down. We don't want that. That's good. You know, so yeah, good. okay. I'll entertain you all right. And uh, it worked, though. Yeah. yeah. We'll be back in just a moment and see what funny thing happened to Coach Brown after these messages. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against a tough competitor, Plastic. Don't trust those numbers on the bottom. You have to stick to what you know. Only bottles and jugs found in the kitchen, bath, or laundry. They're quick to pick up and empty those bottles before sinking that shot. Always empty your bottles before recycling. Score big by recycling your plastic bottles and jugs. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. I love Will Rogers Athletics because it helped me physically, spiritually, and emotionally through all the journeys I've been through at that school. Um, all of the support staff helped me a lot, and it's just an amazing school. Athletics at Will Rogers changed my life because it became a second family with the support of my coaches and teammates. It's helped me gain confidence, work as a team, and will help me in college and in life. Welcome back to our last segment in our roundtable discussion with our coaches. Uh, we need to pick up with uh, Jonathan Brown. Uh, you didn't have anything funny happen to you. Did you? Yeah, I had a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, one wasn't funny, but now it's funny. And uh, the both both instances weren't funny then, but now they're funny. Uh, but first, uh, welcome to the NFL moment. I believe I, I believe the guy's name was Edgar Bennett. He used to be running back at Florida State. It was uh, our second time playing Chicago, division rival. And uh, I was getting some playing time because they wanted to see what I could do because uh, I had cause I had a foot injury and stuff. And I'm I'm doing a hard rip move. I, I bull rush to I bull rush to a rip the guard. I mean the tackle, and he just ear holes me right here. <laughs> Bam! I'm, I'm talking about they paused it in my feet in film. My feet were like up like this, and so you know everybody started laughing and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And they were like, "Hey, the game's gonna humiliate you. Yeah. And that's just football, you know. Yeah. Don't don't take it personal. Just get better." The second moment was. Um, Reggie, like I say, Reggie Wright was a mentor of mine uh, mm-hmm. because he did go to University of Tennessee, and I, I was fortunate enough to get drafted by the Packers. And his number was 92, obviously, and my number was 91. Well, he used to go to sleep in meetings, <laughs> and would no one say anything. Like, I, it's like, dang, man, Reggie be over there knocked out. Yeah. The D-line coach wouldn't say nothing. Fritz Shermer coming there wouldn't say nothing. And I was like, man, I'm gonna go to sleep, see what happens. <laughs> man, I went to sleep. I woke up. I went to my locker, it was like a $2,500 fine in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Reggie, like, did you ever get a fine? He was like, nope. I was like, well, I guess there's different uh, statuses yeah, right, right now. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. yeah, I knew where I fit in right then real quick. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, guys, the last thing we want to talk about today is let's talk about uh, something that, uh, <clears throat> that nobody knows about you that uh, influenced your life uh, as a coach. I would say, I don't know if it influenced my life as a coach, but it just influenced me to become a better individual. And her name is Miss Alexander. She was my English teacher uh, my senior year at Booker T. Washington High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, fabulous lady. Uh, uh, just, she always would help me and, and take me out. Uh, you know, we, if I had any problems with any kind of reading or any kind of how I set my paragraphs up, she would set time and it just, you know, obviously my parents cared about me and I love my mother and my father, but this was a person that wasn't my football coach, you know, wasn't athletically or anything, but she just cared about me. Mm-hmm. And and I kind of, that kind of really opened my eyes to just be a, become a better person and, and try to do right by other people. And so uh, Miss Alexander, 
Thank you for everything you've done. There you go. Levy, what about you? <clears throat> a little different, but uh, and I know we've talked about how we want to influence young men to all that stuff, but I know selfishly we all love to compete. Um, that's honestly is from a young age, I've always just learned to compete in everything I did. Even as a coach, I st you st although you don't get to go put the pads on there as bad as you want to, every single time if something starts going wrong, you're like, man, I could, but you can't. So what keeps me going, it's influenced me, is just my love for competition and my love to compete in, in anything in life. I mean, I, I love competing no matter what. Even when I'm teaching evaluations, I look at them, I'm like, there ain't no way that was a two. There is no <laughs> way. There ain't no way. And so, I mean, that's just, and then, and on personally, that's just, and, and a lot of people that are close to me know that about me, but it's my love for competition. Emily? Um, just since you're saying, I love that word competition. I mean, uh, I got taught, you know, compete. Um, but the main person um, is my mom. You know, the late Vanilla Ponder um, lost her two years ago. But I never forget, um, and this kind of seems, this seems odd what I'm gonna say. We're playing Madison, I'm in middle school. And I mean, I get a hold to the quarterback, you know, and, and ambulance comes, you know, you know, he's hurt, he think he breaks something, but I got it really good. And I'm excited, you know, I come home the first thing and tell mom, like, Man, you should have been there. I put him the ambulance can. I think I heard him. You know, <laughs> oh, she's like, "What? <laughs> Don't get excited about that. Like, you know, you compete and you have, you know, was he okay? You know, but I think that <clears throat> that built something with me inside as a man. You know, what I mean, to uh, be cautious of people's feelings, be a good person, have high character standards." Uh, which all are all things that you need to be a successful athlete um, at the end of the day. So I, I, I think my mom, um, the, the little things she did um, that influenced me to, to, to always be open-minded and, and to help people and, and not to, to boast, you know, and to and brag on certain things like that um, and just to be humble mm -hmm. and, and, and stay hungry though. So, though, so I guess my Tony. Well, uh, I mean, the competing, I think that's probably a, a, something we all have in common, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I think you have to be a competitor in order to get to that that level. Mm -hmm. But something people don't know about me that I think made a big difference in my life was, uh, you know, when I was 12, 13, 14, I carried around a pocket dictionary. Mm -hmm. So whenever I would run into my friends, they'd ask me, okay, what's the new word for today? You know, so mm. I would come up with all these, you know, elaborate <laughs> words. <laughs> and they were like, well, it was I do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, there you go. Well, that, yeah. that's the deal. But it, 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 um, it helped me become a pretty fluent reader, uh, a person who could understand language, you know, mm. written language. And so that was a big benefit. So uh, it, it taught me how to study. You know, and again, as a professional athlete, again, you need to be able to study, right? Yeah. I remember when uh, I was traded to Washington and uh, uh, Richie Pettibon, <laughs> the defense coordinator, he brought me this book, right? And that's how, you know, that playbook. Yeah, that playbook. <laughs> this <box is there. laughs> yeah. He says uh, the next day, he said, well, we practice the next day, but don't worry about it. We probably won't run through all these defenses, right? <laughs> sure enough, get to practice. Russell, every defense they got. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I didn't blow mine because yeah. I looked at that book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But most yeah. people, you know, were the buzzer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, with the guys that want to really stick, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to study. Mm -hmm. They're going to prepare for whatever, mm -hmm. right? You, either you go through it or not. You know, I can accept both. But and then so the next day, after practice, I hear a conversation between he and Jack Pardee. Jack Pardee's asking Pettibone, okay, well, what do you think about old Peters over there? And I'm in the back, you know, I'm taking notes. I'm the last guy in the in the, in the meeting room. All the good guys had left. And uh, Pettibone says, oh, he's sharp, he's sharp. You know, so it, it made me feel good to know, okay, yeah. 
And, and so that's something I think is important. Kids need to learn how to read. They need to learn how to, you know, pull the information from whatever. You know, I used to uh, give a lot of uh, uh, keynote uh, beginning of the school year speeches to different faculties right. across right. the state. And I would come in, I was introduced, obviously, as the director of athletics. Mm -hmm. And half the room would say, oh, yeah, I really heard about athletics. <laughs> you know? right. And I'd say, you know, there's a group of people in this room that are the, have more pressure than anybody. And, and they're thinking, okay, he's going to tell the coaches they have all this pressure. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know who it is? Mm -hmm. It's that first grade teacher. Yeah. You don't teach them to read. We don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. The rest of their life in the education, mm -hmm. they've got to learn from that day on. And so you have more pressure than any coach ever has. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I'd have them right here. Right. You know, they were right well, there. It is true. But, but it's yeah. the truth. Yeah. That's the truth, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, it is. I mean, that's like <laughs> the truth. <laughs> well, guys, I tell you what, we really enjoyed this. Yeah. Uh, we'll need to do this again sometime. Yes. But it's good to, for you guys to take an hour out on a Tuesday, yeah. which I know was a busy day for football preparation. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you a lot for, for being here today. And uh, we'll be back right after these messages. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against one tough competitor, Glass. That's right, only glass bottles and jars are recyclable. Don't even think about sinking a drinking glass or mirror. Always good to empty your glass bottles and jars before recycling. These two get it, emptying both bottles from far out, and they remove the lids. Score big by recycling your glass bottles and jars. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Athletics is so important at Tulsa Central because it's an outlet for some of our kids there. They get a, a better opportunity to basically give back to our community. At McLean, the sports is what mainly drives a bunch of the students to come to school every single day and work hard because they want to be able to come from the classroom to the field or the court and show what they're good at. We hope that you learned a great deal about our level of coaching in the Tulsa Public Schools that we provide for our student athletes. We also hope that you have a better understanding about the importance of quality coaching and the effect it has on students not only uh, in the playing field, but also in the classroom. I want to thank our coaches for sharing their candid observations of their positions in education-based athletics. Time during the season is very precious each week as we prepare for each week's game in the competition at every Friday night. Good luck to all of our student athletes and to their teams and their coaches that they represent the Tulsa Public Schools uh, around the state of Oklahoma. We'll see you in two weeks where we have another edition of Inside Tulsa Athletics.